This would normally be the part where I ask for an official proposition for Thunderball. I'm going to throw my own hat in the ring because I want to somewhat restate the minutes from last week. Last week was like our first fun argument time. We actually had two movies that it could have been either or, and we ultimately settled on Goldfinger for several reasons. You know, go watch that episode if you haven't seen it. The discussion came down to the spectrum that Bond lives on. Serious and gritty, and then fun and goofy, and they all fall somewhere in that spectrum. So ultimately, we put Goldfinger at the top from Rush With Love at number two and Dr. No at number three. What I'm going to submit is that Thunderball has nothing on Goldfinger. It has nothing Nothing on From Russia With Love. I think where the discussion last week was Goldfinger versus From Russia With Love, and we barely even talked about Dr. No because it was just understood it was at the bottom. Even though it's a fabulous movie, it's still at the bottom. I'm going to submit Thunderball versus Dr. No fighting for the bottom of the list. And I'm going to propose that we put Thunderball at the bottom. Ooh. <laughs> Do I have a second on that? I disagree. <gasps> Here's and I'm the thing. Okay with- I'm going to agree with Charlie. Okay. Yeah. So it's, I'm, so it's- I'm somewhere in the middle. I agree with the first proposition that these two battle it out. I do agree with that. I'm I not just sure. Think I, yeah. so, I'm not sure I fully agree it's at the bottom yet. So we are at least understanding we're, we're, we're not fighting. Last week was fighting for the top position. This week, fighting for the bottom. But in the grand scheme of things, I think Dr. No has less stupid shit. It may not be as big. It may not have the impressive underwater visuals and all that. But regardless, I think it makes better decisions where Thunderball has a lot of stuff that if you don't think about it, it works. But if you think about it and you nitpick it, the movie has a lot of stupid cutting of corners and poor decision making in terms of movie logic. And for those reasons, that compels me to put Thunderball at the bottom of the list. Personally, for me, I think it's a little bit better than Dr. No, but I don't disagree with you. So let me go through some of what, when I'm watching the movie, maybe you guys noticed this too, but I do agree, Charlie, that this movie has a lot of plot convenience. And I don't know if it's from the scripting stage or if it was from the book stage or where it came in. So the first one, first one I can, I can buy at least, because I'm like, okay, it's the beginning of the movie, but when you do it multiple times, that's when it kind of like, okay, now you're breaking the fourth wall for me. So the first one's Bond just so happens to be at the same spa that Angelo's at. That just mm-hmm. seems a little convenient, but I'm, I, I can buy it. I can be like, okay. Yeah, so Angelo is the guy who is hired by Spectre, specifically Count Lippy. Angelo takes on the face and persona of Francois Derval, who is a pilot for or NATO. They do a little body double thing so they can swap in their man Angelo for Duvall. They kill Duvall and then Angelo goes off on this mission to steal the nukes. This just so happens to be right after Bond kills number six of Spectre. Yes. I regret to inform you all of the death of Spectre number six. Colonel Jacques Duval was killed by an unknown assassin. So then they bring in everybody. All the double O agents are brought in. All of the United Kingdom's Secret Service is on high alert. It is very cool and unprecedented that you have all of the double O's lined up, literally like yeah. the, you know, the nine rings for the men, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and nine, nine rings were gifted to the race of men who above all else desire pussy we never see any of them we just see their backs but it's understood that you have one two three four five six seven eight nine and bond walks over to seat number seven and sits down that's really cool and shows that this is movie (laughs) number four that has a bigger budget this is why it's better (laughs) it's got more briefings more agents better more (laughs) agents is better scott you said please more agents more numbers bigger screen on wall (laughs) giant contraption (laughs) carpet goldfinger has a better plot it has a better plot better villain better co-villain better car better Q, I, I want to hear why, I want to fucking hear specifically why it's yeah. better. Rush the first one. one. R- R- it Rush has a better has... overall plot. Better hold on, villain. Hold on. Scott. That mean, Scott, I'm saying Scott, that listen. means nothing to me. I want you to tell me why. It okay. had a better overall Charlie, plot. Let me talk. It means nothing. Then let me talk. Stupid dick. If you, if you were to analyze the I'm going to drive up to Michigan and kill this 
if we're analyzing yes okay so let's talk about that for a second this is where the second big plot convenience comes into play so bond gets a folder and you notice it says honor majesty's circuit service which will be a later film but i love that that is on there so yep. he opens the folder up they say open your folders up he looks through all the files it's all the pilots everything you need to know about the mission of the vulcan which was the plane that goes missing he goes and finds a photo oh my god look he sees yeah. a photo of Angelo <laughs> with boop. another girl who we will know as the, the main Bond girl And this. Her name goes by Domino. And he sees that and he goes, Well, there was a photograph of that man in this dossier you gave us. His name is Daval. Well, I saw him last night at Shrubland's, but he was dead. Huh. I saw this man last night. He died. And then yep. he sees a sister and it's taken in Nassau. The bombs must be in Nassau. Who is this girl? The, Daval's sister, sir. Uh, do you know where she is now? Nassau. Again, James Bond, super spy, just so happens to be at a spa after killing number six of Spectre to meet another agent of Spectre who is plotting a face swap at that spa who then commits the bomb stealing thing. And then Bond happens to be there to catch on to all of this. What a coincidence. Yeah, it's so convenient. Almost as if... Uh... As if it was intended. Because originally he's told, M says, you're going to go to Station C, which is in Canada, and this is going to be your liaison all the stuff. Oh, the Canada. lady's hot in Canada. He's like, no, I, oh, I like no. this lady. I'd rather go to NASA. He, I'm not going to f***ing Canada. <laughs> Are you f***ing kidding me, Em? Has Bond ever gone to Canada in his life? I don't no. think so. He goes know. everywhere <laughs> but Canada in every one of these movies. OBN Arthur, NATO training flight. Air traffic flashed as they lost it on radar, and we haven't been able to pick it up anywhere. Was she losing altitude when she went off the screen? Yes, sir, rapidly. They already know where the, the path of, of the plane went, right? So in a mm. modern movie, they would have been like, well, we know the plane was here. It stopped here. Like, you, you guys have all seen Lost, you know? Like, they know where the plane could have crashed. So you would think that maybe the first thing they thought is, oh, maybe we should look near the Bahamas to go find this. But no, it's because Bond sees a picture of the guy who died and was like, wait, <laughs> yeah. he has a hot sister. Maybe the hot sister knows something. Yeah. The third one, which I think this is the time when someone in the writer's room was just like, F it. You know, they, they were like, okay, we need to put this thing together. And we've already done this twice now. This one's the big clincher was Bond right after he investigates the Disco Volante, which, by the way, means flying saucer in Italian. Okay. After he hmm. investigates the Disco Volante and, you know, they throw all those grenades and everything and he goes to shore, he just conveniently so happens to get picked up by a specter agent he goes to hitchhike yeah. and it just so happens to be fiona and it's like yeah. okay sure like you know it's it's like a horror movie where they get into the car and it turns out but that it's that's so one of the but, serial it, but there's so but many conveniences then, in this but, movie well this is as far as i go yes me too this is my hotel what a coincidence. Yeah, so convenient. Oh, how convenient. Well, how convenient. And it's almost like the writers literally wrote that in there <laughs> because they knew, oh, f this is very convenient. But then once <laughs> T walks in and he's like, whose luggage is this? And then she's in the tub and she's like, I thought you were in the wrong room. And he. I had no idea that we were next door neighbors. Oh, they just moved me down this afternoon. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Almost as if... Uh... As if it was intended. Yeah. That works. That's that part perfect works. Because that's Bond doing his provoking thing, his provocation thing, where yeah. he's speaking the quiet part out loud, which he always does with bad guys. He yeah. makes it known. He says just enough to be like, I'm your adversary, without really coming out and saying it. So yeah. that line works. But before that, him getting into her car and her pulling up to the hotel is like, a little too convenient unless she knew where he was staying and she pulled up to that hotel. But then why was she driving along the road? Did she like know that Bond had just had an assault on the yacht and that yeah. he was, you know, like, that's what I mean, where it's like, don't think too deeply into this and you'll enjoy it. But if you start exactly. thinking about it a little <laughs> too much, it's like, ah, uh, it's at the bottom of the list.